Welcome everyone to today's session of OAS Patna. Today we have with us Sanshu Tiwari, a cybersecurity professional with over six years of experience. Sanshu is a seasoned penetration tester and a bug hunter who has reported multiple CVs. Today, Pranshu will be sharing his insights on advanced warp speed techniques. Hi, Pranshu. Welcome to OAS Patna. Glad to have you with us. How are you? Hi, Alia. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I'm good. Uh, let's. Uh, I hope this will be an interactive session and a great session for everybody. Uh, so let's start. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so this will this particular session will be all about Bob suit tech news. I hope uh, being a pen tester and working into a cybersecurity field, we all have heard about what this particular tool is. So I will be mentioning or uh, highlighting a couple of techniques which you might have missed or you might not aware about those and how exactly we can use in our daily to daily life when it comes to bug bounty or when it comes to doing our official pen test engagements. So yeah, I'll be starting. Yeah. So uh, this is a little bit introduction about me. Uh, I have overall six plus years of experience in this particular domain and so far uh, I have worked on multiple different engagements such as web, mobile, API, Docker, network, red teaming, <clears throat> all of those uh, engagements. Apart from that, I am also a part, now a seasoned bug bounty hunter reported vulnerabilities to 100 plus companies including google microsoft philips i'll say you name it I, i'll say i have my name in their hall of fame or i have the word from them apart from this i have three cvs on my name uh, right now i am leading a team of 10 plus pentesters who are <clears throat> engaged in red teaming activities and other projects uh, majorly into pci domain uh, i'm also a OCP pci ASV certified Apart from that, I also do trainings for the interested persons who wanted to start their career into the cybersecurity domain or they want to enhance their current skill set if they want to learn something. So yeah, that is all about me. <laughs> Let's come to the topic. So basically the topic is what is Burp Suit? So you might have heard it. What is Burp? So it's a proxy tool which basically help us to analyze and modify the traffic which is basically http and https in real time allows us to do thorough testing for the web application for each and every request which is basically generating from the web application and communicating to the server <laughs> burp also support automated testing as well as the manual testing so in burp we have a feature which basically does the automatically crawling of the application of each and every link and identify based on the signature based on the version details it identify our vulnerabilities that's where burp also does an automated scanning we have a particular module <clears throat> called as intruder which basically helps you to automate the couple of tasks such as otp spamming email spamming brute force attack dictionary based attacks so that's where we can utilize the tool intruder uh, apart from that burp is a manual testing tool it allows you to identify and manipulate the each and every request multiple times according to you according to your custom payloads and customizability so burp also have a extender feature which basically allows you to write your own custom add-on custom tool which basically does the automation for you according to your task or how however you want to automate it so yeah just a little introduction about burp how it works and where exactly burp sits when we talk about it's a proxy you should get a clear picture in your head in your mind that okay when we say burp or when we say proxy where exactly it states so just to showcase that we have a we have a picture so if you see burp is a proxy tool which basically sits and works between the browser and the server so when you say browser and the server in between burp works as a proxy tool so whenever you configure your burp uh, your firefox or your any other browser with the burp proxy so what it does is it routes all the traffic from the browser to burp and then all the traffic goes from burp to the server and once uh, while receiving the response from the server it goes the same way so server sends response to the burp suit and then burp suit forward that particular traffic to browser and this is where we as a pen tester we have a capability or burp allow us 
verb gives us the capability to modify the particular request with our payloads or with our hit and try thing. So if you want to see that what if if you manipulate the particular data, particular parameter value to some other value, how the server will react. So that is where verbs come to the picture and it helps you to do and to allow you to hit to do all those hit and try changes. And that basically helps you to identify the vulnerability in the application or the particular request. So I hope now you understood or now at least you get a picture of Bob suit or a proxy tool whenever somebody talks, uh, say something about proxy. Yeah. So capture local host. So I I've seen like many of the, uh, many of uh, you while walking for a CV, people have reached out to me, like how to go for a CV hunt where you guys uh, host a particular CMS or any particular software on your local host, but you are not able to intercept the traffic of uh, local host into your pub suit. So how to do that? So uh, that's where uh, I'm going to show you. So how exactly you, we can do it. So let's make it. So now this is my burp suit. I already, I am assuming that everybody uh, knows how to configure burp with Firefox. So let's check. Okay. At, at present, I don't have any particular server running on my local host, but just to capture the particular request, I'll be using something as index.htm. Okay. So now if you see uh, what is happening, I'm not getting any particular request, right? So how to capture this if if i'm trying to uh, capture or if i'm trying to host any particular application in my local host then how exactly we can do that so this is the mozilla not the uh, local host so how to do that we have to go about config this is basically a configuration setting for mozilla and you have to search for hijack there you'll see three options and out of those you have to check for network proxy allow hijacking localhost by default it will be false just double click on it and it will be enabled now if you go and turn on your intercept and try to access the localhost now you see you are getting the traffic see now you are able to capture the localhost See, all the local host requests are now coming. So this is how basically uh, you can intercept the local host traffic. And whenever you, whenever your task is done, if you want to disable the same thing again, because if you do not disable it at the time of your day-to-day -day pen testing, you might see a lot of uh, local host requests coming in. So <clears throat> it's recommended if you are doing any particular testing where Sometimes in your client environment, they host the particular application on a local host just for the internal use. So in that case, how exactly you can, uh, you can manipulate that and you can intercept the traffic out of that. So this is a little bit about that. Now coming to the target tab, uh, I believe I'll, I'll let's say, say this PPT across, let's talk about the practical way. So this is the target tab basically. And if you all, if you guys know, you can do automatic scanning as well so how to do that uh, so whenever you, uh, i'm assuming we are working on a particular uh, host which is google.com so let's make it to the scope there's a better way to identify all the traffic specifically for the application which we are doing testing for so this is how you can just add to scope and do the filter show only in scope items and now you will be only seeing that particular traffic of the application which you are testing that this could be anything uh, even at the time of localhost also you can use this this is where you can see the sitemap of the entire application so i'll highly recommend you guys while doing bug bounty hunting or any of your other engagements just crawl this while crawling it you can go for engagement tools and discover content. So most of the time when you guys run Darebuster or any other tool just to identify the hidden directories, Burp will allow you 
to identify those particular directories without running anything and you can do your other tasks at the back end and this will be running side by side most of the time you will see a kind of a gray area gray particular url so that's where the particular link is present but you will not be able to hit that because of some reasons they might have some login functionality for that or some other dependency but this is a great feature of bug which I, which helps you identify hidden directories without using any other third party softwares and it also uh, keep it very low so the, your application will not hit much traffic so that it won't goes down as well so this is one part which i wanted to highlight because many people are missing this particular thing in our day to day life and then we also have one more thing discover content so basically whenever when you uh, hit this it goes uh, for a derbuster and at the same time it also for example if identifies one complete folder so now it will also check all the directories after the complete folder i also check the uh, directories similar to complete folder so most of the time if you see directory listing and all of those things you'll get directly in here okay so directory listing kind of things you don't need to go and check manually for every url it's simple and easy way from here you can get that and in order to run the automatic scan you just have to right click on the target click on scan crawl and audit is basically a feature it automatically crawl and goes each and every request if it founds in any particular application so for example your web application has four buttons and it has four different links so it will automatically replicate those links and it will again go and crawl those particular pages as well there is also a good feature of bug which basically allows you to capture the login so if you are testing a dynamic application and it's a big application you don't want to manually go and you cannot go manually and uh, do all the crawling so that's where you can create your logins so maybe you can uh, my local host you can give the label for the application which you are testing and you can enter the credentials in here so at the time of crawling and auditing the particular application wherever application asks for any user credentials it will be using those particular user credentials and crawling all the applications so that's where if any particular endpoint is there which is accessible only for authorized users you will be seeing that and you'll, you will without going and login you will see all those results and responses of, of that particular request and we have four different uh methods or uh, i'll say configuration for scanning deep being the best method but i'll suggest you to go for balanced one because lightweight is basically checks for very small things on the top level layer you can say fast basically uh it it also reduces couple of checks not validates thoroughly i'll recommend you to go for a balanced one it won't send much traffic and it will be a uh, thorough thorough uh directory listing and validation for all the vulnerabilities but please do not accept these vulnerabilities as uh identified vulnerabilities so these are just a signature based vulnerabilities by automatic crawling feature of the work so you have to manually cross validate each and every vulnerability found in here then the one best feature which i wanted to talk about but most of the time you guys were working for uh, <clears throat> working for uh, uh, accesses vulnerability many of you uh, i i believe will be checking for accesses feature so that's where every time you guys have to go and manipulate the particular um, text field so for example in the web ui you guys are entering accesses per accesses payload but they have a ui validation and that's where you know now you're you are not able to enter your payloads so how to bypass that particular thing then you come and intercept the perfect intercept the request into burp and then every time manually you have to change a particular value to a payload for example i'm entering a html payload right so every time you have to come and manually uh enter the particular payload into a text field so how to automate this part so whenever you enter something at the uh, ui level for example you are entering at the ui level at your own name and you want the moment verb captures it verbs to automatically replace this and enter a accesses payload of your own choice so how to do that so let's i'm going to show you so for that you have to go to proxy so there is a 
very interesting rule called as request interception rules. You have to click on add rule, boolean operator and or or. Then match type domain name. All of these are match types. If you want to change the domain name, IP address protocol, anything. So you have the value. Apart from this, you also have response interception request uh, rules. So whenever your server reverts some response and you want that to be modified uh, in case of response manipulation like OTP bypass or any other privilege escalation techniques, you can keep that. So how to do that? HTTP match and replace and rules. So yeah, this is the best way. So for example, you have a key value of one. So request header. And now this particular header is in request body. So let's go to uh, request body. And from value one, replace it with So the, that's it. So every time any particular request containing value one as a parameter value, it will be auto replaced with the entered payload. So this is where if you have, many people have their own favorite set of XSS payloads or SQL payload or maybe CMDI payload. So this is basically, it's the easiest way. So the moment you enable this particular setting, so every time any particular request having this value one in the request body will automatically get replaced by this. So I'm going to do this. Oh. And let's change it because as of now, I don't have any web application. So let's do this. Post this to be changed as google.com. Okay. So let's do this. I have configured it, Re request body to request header. Okay. Now if I am, now if I go and intercept this particular, okay, we have changed actually. Oh. Now, if I reload this, so based on our rule, let me just go. Yeah. Now, based on our rule, it should it should change. But why this is not changing? Because we have mentioned about localhost, and in here we have a port also associated with it. So only request with out without any particular port number will be replaced. So sometimes if your client, they have multiple application hosted on a same shared server and a different port. So that's where you can segregate and create your own rule. So if you click on help this. Post request header. Okay. See, by default, you can see the host is local host, but in here will automatically change it to google.com. So if you just send it to repeater, you'll see and now it's going on google.com rather than your local host. So this is where you can, uh, basically this is how you can modify each and everything. So in place of google.com, you can modify any other value in the request header. So while doing most of the time, if you are doing API pen testing, you have to add a specific authorization bearer token or authorization header in that. So that's where you can just modify this. You can add up a new rule, request header, keep it as blank and just add the header uh, or some, something like this. And the moment you hit that particular request, your request will be updated with that particular token. So this, this gives you privilege to automate your some basic 
task in uh, while doing verbs when testing. So that's where if you are if you are having uh, if you are doing any sort of exercise and you know uh, that what will be the response if that particular application is vulnerable. So that's where you can use these uh, grip and match and replace rules. Then when additional things comes, if you want to bypass a particular uh, proxy, in that case, you can use upstream proxy. If you have, if you guys have heard about that. Yeah. So this is the upstream proxy. So most of the time when you are testing a particular application with the firewall or something like some sort of validation in place in there, and you have to bypass that particular setting or configuration via a, some some other servers, how exactly you can do that? So upstream proxy, it basically allows you to route all your traffic from a specific server. So for example, right now, our Burp is setting as a proxy tool in between the browser and the server. So now what you can do is you can add a one more proxy server in between. So now each and every request of yours will be originating from your Burp, uh, from your Firefox browser. Then it will redirect to Burp suit. Then from Burp, you can mention the destination host. If you if you have any of your own server and you want each and every request and response should go through that particular server so that end server will identify, okay, this particular request is generated from this server, not from your origin, origin laptop. So this also helps you to uh, mask your current IP. So what you have to do is just upstream proxy destination host you have to give destination host will be the application you are testing for example we are testing google.com so it will be a google.com and the proxy host will be your host or a proxy server so for example if you have something called as um, we have something like this so in that case what particular port we want the traffic to go so for example i'm taking double eight double eight so now each and every request I'm, uh, I'm using my laptop or using my verb suit. So every request from my verb suit will go to ospartner.com and then it will reach to google.com server. So when you trace back the logs, always the request at Google is coming from ospartner, not from my laptop. So this is how you can bypass the couple of VPN, couple of proxy settings if you want to use. And just in case, in couple of environments, you might have to use some sort of uh, authentication. So based on the your proxy server authentication, you can uh, select the authentication methods. For example, if it is a basic, you can use, you have to enter the domain name if it is required. If not, it's fine. So now you click on OK. So now each and every request originated from my verb suit or forwarded from my verb suit will go through ospartner.com and we'll be using ospartner as a proxy host so this basically helps you to bypass a couple of restrictions present in the client environment or any particular application if you have and then there is one more thing tls so most of the time there are applications which basically works on certain ssl certificate based so in order to run those particular applications in your system or in order to access those particular uh, applications from your system, you you need a couple of certificates from the customer or from the application owner itself. So in that case, you can configure those uh, SSL certificates in here. And if you want, if your particular application want you to use specific protocols, then these are the these are the settings from where you can modify and you can use those particular ciphers while accessing those applications yes yes so this is the client tls certificate so whenever your application restricts you or we have some sort of client side certificate in order to access those so that's where the client side tls certificates helps you so here you have to enter the destination host and the file, pkcs file, which basically you have to upload in here and that, that file always have a password. So you have to enter the password and then only you will be able to access that particular application. So always while doing a bug bounty, I, I'm not sure if you guys have to see, but while working on a private uh, programs, 
you might have to check with the platform owner if they have some sort of client side restrictions for any of the application if yes in that case you will have to ask or you'll get somewhere in the program description itself that that particular application can be only accessible via the certificate and in that case you have to utilize that particular certificate uh, in here and that's how you can basically access that particular application via your verb suit otherwise uh, first of all you will not be able to access those web applications and if you are installing the particular certificate in your system you will be able to intercept you will be able to access but you will not be able to intercept because verb uh, does not know and whenever the particular request is going from verb or uh, you, have, you are intercepting that particular request via verb you will not be able to so that's where you have to make sure that you have imported that particular client certificate in the verb itself so those are the certificate calls call as client side certificate client side certificate are basically a prerequisite for a couple of uh, applications to use then uh, i believe intruder everybody uh, already know about this what exactly this is so just to uh, let you new guys who are here so sniper better battery ram patch for cluster mob these are the four different types in order to brute force the login credentials or any other parameter value according to your test attack so sniper is basically a sniper you can use whenever you you have one particular parameter to target and uh, battering ram is uh, is also a type of uh, a feature to brute force but it uses a single set of payloads into a uh, n number of parameters so for example you have a dictionary list which you want to use for a username and the password for both the things at one particular word list in that case you can use battering ram so if you just select battering ram so this is how you can uh, mark your targets where you want to use a particular word list for all those parameters and then you can import your word list in here so this is the difference sniper only works for one particular parameter and battering ram works for two different parameters but all utilizes the same word list then coming to patch fork this uses multiple set of payloads so in this basically you can give one set word list for uh, username or for password and then one different word list for any other uh, target parameter so if it is a otp based attack you can maybe use alphanumeric if it is otp for email and mobile so in that case you can use two different set of word list basically people use it for uh, password brute force on a login page so that's where you can use one set for username and one set for password cluster bomb basically uses a multiple set of payloads again the same thing you can use two different word lists one for username and one for password but it make combination so what it does is cluster bomb will use first username and for all the passwords for the password list we have given so that's how it creates the different combinations for between username and password and it executes that and that's how it tries basically it basically tries to identify the login credential for uh, for uh, that particular login page so this is all about intruder you can utilize it for brute force attack uh, for otp brute force otp spamming or sometimes in order to bypass mass assignment kind of attacks validation if they have you can also utilize this for rate limit um, once you hit multiple set of uh, brute force you might be able to bypass the rate limit or you can identify how exactly and what number of limits they have set in and then accordingly you can add some custom headers in order to bypass that particular restrictions repeater i believe everybody is well aware so i won't touch that i'll i'll try to cover this collaborator part so now verb basically have this collaborator uh, this basically works so most of the time while doing bug bounty hunting for ssrf kind of attacks we need uh, a server basically which we can see if the particular hits are coming earlier people were using ngrock uh, on a local system just to cross verify if they are getting a hit but now burp burp introduced his its own dummy server in order to test those kind of attacks so if you go to burp collaborator and you just copy this burp gives you a temporary server basically which works only for you and any particular request uh, coming for that particular hit will be uh, you you can see that particular request in here just a yeah so if any particular hit is coming on that particular burp collaborator from any of the request 
you will see a list of source IP and the comment if there if there are any comment associated to it. You will see the source IP, you will see the payload and the entire particular request which is basically coming from that server. So that's how you can validate if the application is vulnerable to SSRF or if it is any particular parameter is accepting any third party server without any validation. So this is a very good feature of Burp which we call it as Burp Collaborator and it also allows you to create multiple dummy servers. So if you are testing a couple of uh, parameters, so you can basically name each and every parameter that this is a login parameter. And that's how you can identify what all parameters are vulnerable. Again, the same thing, if you want to uh, map all this collaborator thing with the proxy grip and match feature, it's a fully automated task for you. By default, you just enter the, you, you can make some custom checks in the open well, uh, in the UI part, you can just enter the URL uh, and here you can, yeah. So for example, I, I'll just use, rather than entering the entire URL for a local host or a google.com, I'll just mention in the request body, I'll just mention URL and in here I'll use my work collaborator. So the moment any particular value with the URL in it comes in request body, by default, Burp automates that and change that to Burp Collaborator. So you don't need to worry uh, that manually, you don't need to change again and again the URL to uh, your Burp Collaborator. And by default, you'll get all the requests in here. So that's how you can automate your SSRF, your uh, SQL injection, your command injection, your XSS attacks. <clears throat> then uh, while, while while learning your cybersecurity thing, you might have heard of an attack called session prediction, which you guys might not even trying these days. And it's a kind of a very rare attack nowadays because all the all the libraries, all the functions are quite updated now. But in this in this time also, you might get this particular vulnerability. So people are uh, people don't know exactly how exactly they can check the strength of a particular cookie how strong that cookie is, what kind of pattern that particular cookie is using. So in that case, uh, this sequencer helps you. So the moment you send any particular request to sequencer, it what it does is it checks if that particular request has any sort of uh, cookie in it. So if you have any particular request with any cookie value in it, then we can check for this. Let me just check. Okay, just a second. Let me... For example, we have this particular request with the cookie parameter in it. So now if you send this particular request into the sequencer, see by default, it takes that because the particular request has a cookie value in it. Now, if you click on stack capture, it will start sending or generating a number of cookies, you can say, and it will analyze those particular cookies. If the tokens are generated via, via any uh, specific by any specific uh, algorithm. So for example, if the algorithm is set to plus one uh, to the cookie value, or if it is uh, generated by a combination of username and password and the user ID of particular account. So it will basically helps you to identify to crack that. And uh, in order to test that, you just have to save the tokens and everything by default in the uh, in here. Wait. So by default, verbs give you a summary of that particular by default, verbs give you a summary of uh, cookie strength, basically how good the cookie is and what is the strength, what is the parameter, is it possible for you to uh, basically do a prediction for a next cookie or a cookie of any particular user. So that's how you can, you can uh, utilize this uh, in order to get a proper, uh, not a false positive review, uh, I'll say to have a request of somewhere around 15,000 between 10 to 15,000 requests. So once those particular requests are there, you can just stop the token and uh, click on analyze now. So right now it's not uh, enough request. So yeah, so the moment you have around 10,000 plus uh, request in here, you'll get this enable button enabled, analyze now. And the moment you uh, analyze, it will give you a strength summary, bit level analysis, and a couple of other analysis, like how the 
particular algorithm is used and uh, how how strong and weak the cookie is basically that allows you to predict the session of any any other user and then decoder i believe you might have already know what decoder is so basically decoder helps you to decode any particular uh parameter or pa parameter value or a cookie so for example a lot of uh, applications uses uh p64 authentication or p64 uh encoding values when a couple of applications they use application level encryption so in that case they use uh per uh, base 64 so how to validate that if you have any doubt how to check that if what kind of uh encryption or algorithm they are using so there you can utilize the decoder feature of both just a second Oops. just give me a second Yeah, so you have to, for example, I'm giving Edwin admin as a as a value, and I want to encode this for my XSS payload. Uh, but so what I can do is I can just encode it as base sixty four, and I have the encoded value within Burp itself. It's not like I have to go to some other online encoder or decoder. So if I have some parameter value as this, now I want to see what sort of value it is, or if I want to modify it, how to validate what sort of value it is. So we have a smart a smart decode feature in Burp. So this basically identifies based on the signature and it tries to decode based on certain algorithms. So when you click on this smart decodes, it will check if it is able to decode that or not. If not, in that case, what you can do is decode as URL. It's not a URL encoding, HTML. Then you can check base for the moment you said. Uh, select base 64 decode it will give you a clear text value of that particular parameter so that's how now you can modify this and you can reuse the same because you know it's a base 64 you can recreate it and you can utilize this particular parameter value uh, wherever you want so that's how you can basically encode your and uh, encode and decode your uh, payloads parameter value we also have a feature in here itself in the burp itself so so now if we have a value called as admin admin just select it select it right click and now you have convert selection so this also allows you to convert the special characters or decode or encode key characters or the entire string so now if you click on url encode all characters it will basically do the url encoding for all the characters or all the parameters value in it if you want to decode it you can uh, convert again and if you want to use any other sort of uh, algorithm for example if you want to use html decode or html encode so you, you can use this particular model of so uh, then i believe extensions is a good option or good feature of verb suit so you can use any sort of uh, additional uh, tool or a capability which you can add into your verb feature so for example i'll install this wsdl er so this basically allows you to parse all the wsdl files uh, in here in one shot so if you have a wsdl file which is having around 1000 plus uh, request or 100 plus request it basically parts you the entire file and it gives you 100 requests in one shot. So basically, you don't need to waste time uh, hitting uh, the particular request again and again or form the particular request one by one. So these are the couple of uh, extensions you, which you already have in Web Store. But apart from this, you can uh, manually customize in particular uh, add-on and you can import that also. So uh yeah that's it uh, for this session from my side now we can we are open for q a if you guys have any particular questions thank you Priyanshu, uh, for such an insightful session uh i can see a few questions in the chat if you would like to take that up yeah sure yeah. can and you anyone who has questions you can directly ask him or uh, if you uh, feel more comfortable writing down in the chat you're welcome to do that yeah so i can see uh vivek have you used kaido yes we have used i have used kaido but still it's a 
great competition for burp i'll say but it's not that user friendly uh, i believe uh, it, it lacks a couple of features but yeah the kind of have a very good uh, reverse proxy or you can say invisible proxy which burp lags at, uh, at the initial attempt so if there is an application which is already a proxy aware applications that you can intercept the traffic from Kaido by default, but in order to capture the traffic of uh, any proxy of applications in Burp Suite, you have to do a little bit manual configuration, which by default comes in Kaido. Yeah, but Kaido is a good tool. We can explore that as well. Collaborator and few others you mentioned are in Burp Pro. What to use in community version? So the collaborator, yes, definitely that is a pro version uh, configuration, but uh, the book, other features I have mentioned, those are the available in community version. You can use those. Um, at present, Burp community does not have anything, uh, any alternate for collaborator, but yes, you can find a couple of add-ons from GitHub, which you can use on a community version. I'm not sure if that is. What extension do you use in everyday life from Monica? So, uh, majorly I'll say, uh, I'll, like very few. So in terms of uh, Burp Collaborator, yes, definitely we use it for every day in every engagement for uh, SSRF kind of checks. But other than this, where, whenever, like I have mentioned WSDLR, then we have uh, SSL related stuff. So that is a good one. Uh, it basically allows you to see if your application is using any sort of SSL or if you have any weak uh, uh, algorithm or uh, in use. So if you if your uh, SSL application is using any weak SSL certificate that has CVC in it, you will see lucky 13 vulnerability. So for those kind of things, you don't need to go ahead and do an Nmap scan for the SSL related stuff. By default, you'll get in that. Then I use Log4j shell everywhere, and then InQL is a good GraphQL scanner. So if you are working with the GraphQL things, uh, you can use InQL. Then uh, I believe uh, JSON Web Token Attacker is a good one because nowadays most of the application uses JWT token. So that basically uh, allows you to manipulate the entire token and change the request and change the parameter value in the payload section of it. And yeah, that is a good one, JWT attacker. Can you show how to set advanced scope? Uh, what do you mean by advanced scope? Okay. or any domains. So when you go to target section, for, first of all, when you configure your burp suit with your Firefox and you go to a, you crawl your application even once, you'll see that particular uh, domain listed in the target section. You just have to right click on it and click on add to scope. That's where it basically add to scope and then you get a filter uh, option enable on top of that. If you click on that, you can only select show only in scope items and that's where you will only see in scope application details and all the sublinks or subdirectories out of it like using regex yes so again uh you have to specifically see for what particular attack you are trying and how you are uh uh like you you try to grep and match so before doing any sort of, before setting any sort of rules in grep and match, what you have to do is in order to uh, set that properly, first you have to capture the normal request which you want to test and send it to Burp Suit Repeater and get the normal response so that you can cross verify what you have to grep and what you have to uh, replace. So once you have a normal response from that particular request, based on that, you can create a rule. Okay, so Prancho, uh, there are a few questions sent to me in DM. I would just redirect it to you. Uh, yep. There's this one question from Prateek. Your top five burp extension. My top five burp extension. I need to see. Just give me a minute. Let me check. Okay. So, InQL, CO2, uh, JSON Web Token Attacker, then WSDLR, and then you can use anything for this thing. What do you say? Turbo Intruder, you can also use. This helps you to expedite your brute force process. 
And for whenever you are working on some sort of Oracle related application, I'll recommend to use pad padding Oracle, which basically people missed because of uh, the, there is, people think it's a very outdated kind of bug, but still, if you guys use pad padding Oracle Hunter, you might get this point of vulnerability. And this basically helps you to escalate the privilege directly without doing most of the things. Can you show how to use CO2 efficiently? Uh, maybe in our next session, uh, because it's uh, like it has a couple of dependencies like SQL map and all those things uh, to add it in, in prominent variable and all. So yeah, maybe you guys can send a couple of uh, extensions which you want us to cover in the later part of time. Uh, yeah, definitely we can have a session on CO2. Uh, there's one more question directed to me basically. My dear. Any suggestions for JavaScript analyzing tool or any verb extension? Uh, yes. So there is one, uh, J, okay, just let me send you the name itself. JS token analyzer, or uh, you can see JS link finder, basically, that's a good one, which basically gives you uh, all the analytics and identify JS links. And recently, one of my friends, I'm not sure if he has published it yet, but he's working on some, uh, a uh, Bob extension, which basically helps you to identify any uh, token present in JavaScript files. So I'll send this in the group itself. I'll send the that particular GitHub uh, repository so you guys can use that. So Pranshu, we could see a lot of thank you messages in the chat. I believe you can also see it. There's a thank you uh, message from Sonam, Saket, Ayush, Manisha. Suraj, Saket, a lot of people, yeah. Thank you guys for joining. And we hope we, this was our first session. So we thought of having a very normal verb session of basic topics of the verb and how you can automate a couple of tasks in verb. So yes, if you guys, you guys can let us know what else, what other topics we you would have you use Zap. Uh, any case, yes, uh, very initial days, but now, I feel Burp is a very user-friendly tool. So I barely use Zap until unless I have any specific requirement to use that. Otherwise, I prefer Burp suit. So that's a good one, I feel. I think uh, we are good to conclude. Once again, thank you, Pranshu, and thank you everyone for joining in today. I believe we all will be using it, uh, these techniques, we all will be integrating these techniques for our testing methodology. So thank you once again, everyone. Thank you, Pranshu. Thank you, Alia. Thank you, everyone, for joining. See you soon in other sessions. Thank you all.